Now, even though, even though they both grew up in small towns in Wales, my next guest's lives so far have taken them on completely divergent paths. One is a Hollywood actor who has appeared in films such as Notting Hill and The Boat That Rocked, while the other pursued a life of crime as a drug smuggler before being sentenced to 25 years in jail. They are here tonight because one is playing the other in his life story. Would you welcome, please, Reese Hiffens and Howard Marks. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, Howard, the last time you were on this, uh, this programme was uh, obviously a different presenter. It was Gay Byrne at the time <laughs> that you were right, here. Yeah. And you finished the programme and you had uh, people to greet you outside the building. Is that correct? Yes, I know the incident you referred to. What happened? To. Um, <clears throat> well, Gay asked me, OK, if I had any dope on me. <laughs> I didn't want to lie to him. So I said yes. And not realising it was going out live, really, you know, I just sort of thought it was pre-recorded or something. <laughs> Next thing, go back to the green room, the guard are there. So we're all, including Tim Murphy, the professor of law at Cork, we're all trying to hide the dope now, because the guard are there. <laughs> In the end, they only wanted to know where I was staying. So I, I made up a, a name of a hotel and they went away. <laughs> OK. Uh, I'm sure Tim Murphy wasn't anywhere near the scene, uh, just to protect his uh, <laughs> dignity and respect in this sense. But uh, where did you hide? No, he was. I was <laughs> just, just, just stop. <laughs> uh, what uh, was... Uh, where did you hide it? Uh, under the waste paper bin in the green room. OK, it's probably still there. He's, uh, hide, he's hiding it in me tonight, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm a bit uncomfortable, yeah. Oh, did you have a few before you came on? Yeah, I'm Howard's mule. <laughs> well, God, tell me you're joking. Huh? <laughs> is it there now? Huh? Where is it? It's waiting for you, honey. Ah, <laughs> it's going to be one of those days, I think. Uh, but uh, how did you go, you know, back from, you know, smoking a few joints and, and, you know, being doing what so many people do in college to becoming this international drug smuggler? How did, that, how did the transition occur? Well, it was very, very gradual, Ryan. You know, it, it began with uh, me smoking a joint, liking it, reacting, I think, rationally, yeah. and having another one, and another one, and another one, and uh, wanting, and ended up being stoned 24 hours a day. Wanting to try more dope, not being able to afford as much dope as I wanted to try, becoming a small time dealer, becoming a bigger dealer, then becoming a very big dealer. Yeah. And very big dealers meet smugglers because smugglers need them to sell their gear. Yes. So I became a smuggler. I got attracted by that profession. So five years after my first joint, I'd forsaken academia and become a dope smuggler. You were in Oxford, weren't you? Yes, you yes. You were studying yeah. and so on, and then you decided that there was uh, another world out there yes, for you. Yes, I noticed I'd made a career shift without really realising it. Yes, absolutely. You, you were caught, of course. Uh, can, you, can you tell us how and when you were caught? And yes, in, uh, I was caught in uh, 1973 as a result of uh, moving hashish from Europe to, to America inside the equipment of rock and roll bands, I mean, at that time. Any bands we might know? Yeah, uh, Pink Floyd. Of course. Yeah, uh, There's a shock. Genesis. Well, that's a big shock, actually. Eric Clapton. Mm. Uh, ELP. Yes. <laughs> um, they didn't know it was happening. It was right? in their speakers. Yeah, it was in their speakers and amplifiers, yeah. Okay. We used to hide it in there. They didn't know it was happening because, well, for security reasons, and they were getting paid with a lot of money anyway. Okay. And then the, the, the catching element of it? The catching element was... Uh, one speaker was inadvertently left behind in transit in New York airport, was sniffed out by a sniffer dog and caught. caught. Investigation made and I was implicated. And imprisoned for how long? Uh, actually, I skipped bail on that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but eventually got caught on something completely different yes. and ended up doing a total of nine years nine in years. prison. Uh, <laughs> horrific experience in prison or not so, so, not so bad? Not horrific, no. no. I mean, I, th I think small on the scale of tragedies. I mean, like the grief I felt, for example, didn't compare to the grief I felt at the death of my parents or something like that. You okay, know? so you contextualise the experience y entirely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think I emerged a better person than I went in. Sure. Uh, I'm Reece... not advising people check in or anything. No, I appreciate that. Uh, Reese, you, were you aware of, of Howard's story growing up from, you know, the news and papers or what have you? 
Yeah, 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 yes, I was. Um, you know, it's um, how many years ago, you know, I always make up a number, you know, but, um, you know, 15, 16 years ago, you know, I was a, a Welsh um, teenager. Yes. And, and, and suddenly, um, <clears throat> you know, my generation was presented with a Welshman who was, uh, I remember a specific interview on, on television when, when Howard was at the, the foothills of incarceration um, in Welsh. Um, and, uh, you know, my generation kind of needed a, a pirate and an, and an outlaw and, a, and, a, and a, um, an elder spokesman, yes. you know. And um, it, it, I was, you know, deeply moved, you know, as were many of us, you know. Yeah. By his um, story, and um, yeah, so it was it was great for us, but I mean it meant nine nine years of <laughs> incarceration for Howard. For, for him, but, 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 but yes. it, well, you know, it was that it, you know it, you know before that you know our, our kind of uh, what we were presented with as, as a, you know Welsh youth were you know singers and sportsmen, you know, um, none of which I cared for greatly. You weren't into that so much, uh, and then your the coalition of forces here. How did you guys then become friends and partners in in crime? Go on then. Okay, <laughs> um, the Super Furry Animals, uh, yes. a band for whom uh, Reese once sung, um, brought out their first album, which coincidentally was about the time of Mighty Dees, which was accompanied by some publicity. Yes, they wrote a song about me and invited me to come and listen to them play. Yes, in Pontypridd. And Reese was one of their guests. Uh, I think we were sleeping on Dav's floor at the time. Yeah. It? And uh, came up, you know, he was introduced to Reese, and he brought out a packet of cigarette papers and asked if I would sign them. I said, yes, signed them. Looked at it rather disappointedly and said, no, I meant every one. <laughs> all of them. Yeah, all of them. Yes. Yeah. And from that moment, you know, we, we could tell the humour in each other. And we talked about what we were doing. I said, I'd just written a book. I'd hope it'd be published soon. Yes. Uh, he Mr. Said nice. He was going, yeah, Mr. Nice. Uh, Rhys said he was going to be a really, really good actor soon. So we concluded, and all this is on film, because Coincidentally enough, someone filmed the entire thing, you know, okay. someone with an amateur video camera. And uh, we decided between us that should my book ever get published, should it be made into a film, should Reese become an actor, he would play me. Well, that was very prescient. And that was 14 memorable. years ago. Yeah, it's <laughs> it took a long time to then to get from there to there to, to the film which opens next week. So, yes. was, what, what was the was there an underlying was there concern in some quarters that you might be what glorifying hash and, and making it something or yes, marijuana indeed, or whatever? Indeed, indeed, there was that concern. Yeah. I, I sold the film, another film. I sold the TV rights yeah. to the BBC for a song actually because I had no idea my book would become a bestseller. You know, so yeah. it was like, my fault. Sold it for a song, and then the BBC realised that there were certain non-PC elements about it. And, yeah. Uh, you know, like I think we've got the same over here in the Republic. I mean, there's a licence fee that's paid that yeah. all goes to one channel. Well, the, 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 the feeling would be, I suppose, in certain quarters that sometimes marijuana or whatever might be uh, might cause, if oh, if taken in excess, like booze to the liver, marijuana to cause psychosis or what have you. That you know, and that there'd be a concern about that. Uh, yes, I mean, I think almost by definition, if you take too much of anything or anything That's, in excess, you've got some adverse yeah. things. Do you think it has harmful... I think it's an inappropriate drug for some people. I, I mean, yeah. I've met people uh, whom it doesn't suit. Um, and I think in most people, there are probably inappropriate circumstances in which yeah. they should take it. I'm just lucky, it just enhances whatever I like, you know. Yeah, okay, <laughs> What about the, the, the IRA connection to the film, Reese? So do you want to talk to us about that or, you know, because it is, it, it's intriguing, it's, it's kind of... The, the IRA connection yeah. to the film? Tell, uh, tell us about it. I don't that. know, did they, did they fund it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea. Um, no, uh, um, well, well, for starters, you're in the film, okay? Yes, so, I am, uh, yeah. Uh, so you might be able to. Do you want to share with us? Uh, well, I, well, you know, I, I think I think Howard's better to answer. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the IRA uh, connection. Um, okay. Um, are well, either I mean, of you? Just, are, just are you on still a, on, on a personal level? Yes. Um, you know, I, I find the MI6 connection far more disturbing than the IRA connection. Yes. 
Well, we'll, we'll go with the Irish angle here, if that's okay. Of course. Uh, yeah. And uh, Howard, you might explain it to us. Yeah, I mean, I, I met during the. This is, we're talking about the late sixties now, very yes. early seventies, when part of any sort of left-wing agenda in the UK included wanting to legalize drugs, wanting to get the Americans out of Vietnam, getting rid of homophobia, getting rid of racism, sure. and support for the Catholic minority in Northern Ireland. It's at the time that Wilson sent in the, Harold Wilson sent in the army to defend the Catholics. You know, it was a very, very different perspective than, than people had later. So that was part of our left-wing agenda. Uh, London underground magazines, left-wing magazines, newspapers would be interviewing sort of IRA members. Yeah. And Jim McCann appeared as an IRA member being interviewed in some of these newspapers. I met him fully believing you know, that he was an IRA member. Yeah. It so happens he's the only person that the IRA have ever felt the need to deny that he was a member. They haven't said that about anyone That else. tells its own story. <laughs> it does say its David Thewlis, of course, plays him in the movie. Uh, we've got a clip of it, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, have you? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's... Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's really good. How soon can you send the Nordal? What the fuck's Nordal? Wise up, you have to use codes, codes and false names. Nordal is hashish. Nordal, eh? Okay? Right. Listen, a word of advice, hard. When you come back, don't fly here, fly somewhere else. Do the last bit by train or bus, car, whatever, hey. Gus, this is hard. Hello, Gus. Ah. That was Gus. He's a member of the Belfast Brigade's assassination squad. I wanted him to know your face and no fucking games now. You understand me, do you? Good, uh, good accent, actually. <laughs> And when you, when you were filming the, the, all of this, Reese, you were kind of half in preparation for Harry Potter, is that right? Um, yeah. Um, well, you know, Howard um, pleasantly and sporadically would uh, arrive on, on set, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Around lunchtime. <laughs> and, um, but then and Howard, we, we filmed half the, half the film in Wales and then we filmed the, the rest of the film in Alicante in Spain. Yes. And um, kind of towards the end of the filming, um, Howard came out for another um, ambassadorial visit. <laughs> and um, there was one particular morning where um, I, I was about to film Harry Potter after uh, doing Mr. Nice. So the, and I, I couldn't fly back to England for a costume fitting. So, so Harry Potter being the, you know, um, the Vatican of the film that it is, you know, flew, flew the costume people out to, to Spain. Yes. Um, and Howard and I happened to be staying next, next door to each other in this hotel, and we'd had a bit of a night, and we both, yes, no, yeah. No, no, yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, anyway, so I was standing, I said, Howard, I gotta go, man, I gotta fucking, oh, excuse me, oh, no. <laughs> I got a costume fit in, right? So I'm standing in the room next door, with these, um, you know, very professional costume people being fitted to look like a wizard. Right? <laughs> um, so I'm standing there with my fucking long sleeves and my hat. And my, oh, I've done it again. Fuck it. Uh, and, my, and my hat like that. So I'm standing like that, it's being fitted, you know, to look obviously like nothing from Howard's life. Right? <laughs> and as, as I'm being measured up by this, Howard walked past and he looked in the room and he said, like, what are you fucking wearing? I said, uh, no, 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 no. I went, so he went, I never wore anything like that. <laughs> I said, I went, it's not for our film. I said, it's for Harry Potter. And I introduced him. I said, this is Jani and this is David from Harry Potter. And he went, nice to meet you. I'm Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 are you, are you uh, do you, do you still smoke? Yes. Uh, but I haven't got any on me. You don't have any? <laughs> well, I got it tonight. Yeah, did you, did yeah. you, did you have a smoke now this evening? Uh, no, 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 Jesus, no. <laughs> did, did you have a scoop? Huh? Did you have a pint? No, I just inject, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> did you have a little smoke before you huh? Did you have one smoke? I had a cigarette, yeah. 
Yeah? yeah what, that's you coming cool. no, 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 yeah, yeah. off with that dainty ta- little foot? What about... Uh... <laughs> Come on, bro. You're, that's, you're... What che- that's what chicks do. There you go. Yeah? Come on, bro. Do you want to buy me a drink before the kiss? Uh, absolutely. Um, tell me, uh, you're filming here at the moment. Yeah. What, tell us about the film. And where uh, where are called, you filming? It's called Neverland. Yeah? Yes. And it's a, it's a prequel to uh, Pizza Pan. Yeah? Good. Okay. Yeah. You familiar with that? I sure am. Yes. Because you've got very Peter Panny feet. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Dainty little bugger. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so and it's a, and so it basically, uh, yeah, it's called Neverland, and uh, it's a um, a beautiful story that explains how Peter Pan arrives at Neverland and how uh, Captain Hook loses his hand. Well, that's the prequel, yeah. and then we find out what happens in the end. Okay, yeah. Harrod, life is okay with you? Yeah, yeah, fine. Are you glad to be back in Ireland? <laughs> what? I'm not going to put my foot near you, don't worry. <laughs> no, no, I'll no, keep no, it to no, myself this time. <laughs> uh, Reese Siffins and you Harrod Marks. The film is called Mr. Nice. It opens in cinemas next Friday. I went to see it on Monday, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed it, and your performance well, is excellent, if I may say so. Thank you. And it's an intriguing story, and thank you for sharing it with us this evening. Cheers. Reese and Harrod live God bless you.